And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at a game called Archon Glory and Machination. Uh, this is a game from Artipia Games. They've made a great game called uh, Among the Stars, a game I like quite a bit. This game is a worker placement game that gives the workers special abilities, something I'm very excited about, or was very excited about. Am I still excited about? Let's see. Right, here's the board of the game. Yes, yes, that's a busy board. It's even more busy in person. But the good thing is, it seems like there's a spot for everything on this board. Now, this is a worker placement game in which players will be placing workers of their color. And it's I like the colors they have for this one, the black, white, gray, and tan. Um, but you'll be placing workers out in various spots on the board. But this game has a very unique system. See, each player is going to start with 10 cards. Eight of those cards are robotic court courtiers. And I have no idea why they're robots, but whatever. Um, so you have eight of these. The other two you're going to pick from four different uh, people over here. You can see that there is uh, tax collectors, scribes, clerics, and merchants. You will pick those by moving your pieces here. Basically, let's say I'm black, I move it here. That means I'll get one tax collector and one merchant. And I'll add those to my hand. Each round of the game is kind of split into two turns. You'll keep this, there's a round tracker down here at the bottom. The first turn, you will split your 10 cards into two groups, one group of five and one group of five. So say, for example, my first turn, I have a tax collector and a, and a scribe, so I pick four of my regular card courtiers and the tax collector. And then I put the other four and the, the scribe as my next five that I'm gonna play. And as time goes by, your, your, these cards may change that you have. So when you are going to play cards, uh, a worker on the board, you play a card along with that worker. So that worker becomes whatever card you play. Uh, courtier is just an ordinary worker. The other cards have special abilities. Uh, the special ability of the scribe is when you play that one, you can then instantly play another guy. So he's kind of like a speed. A tax collector, when you go to a location, you put one of these tokens here underneath your worker at that location to show that they're a tax collector, and everybody else who goes to that location for the rest of that round has to pay you a coin. Merchants will get extra resources from any place that's marked accordingly, and clerics are allowed to go to a spot even if that spot is blocked. Many of the spots in the board, this, see this little cog here, shows a spot that you can go, and then how many cards you have to play. Some up here, for example, you can play one, two, or one card um, when you go. So sometimes you have to play two cards, but the special cards always count, can go anywhere. So if I play a tax collector, for example, I could still go to that spot, even though it requires two cards. So what are the different spots too? Well, let's briefly go over some of them. If you go over here, to the repository, you can take any of these goods that are available here, and each turn a new card is placed here, and different goods will be available for the different rounds. If you're wondering what the different colors are, uh, those are just number of players. And if, you're the, if you send a merchant there, you of course will get an extra good. Down here in the marketplace, you can buy or sell goods. You can see that there's prices there. So this is a, another place to get different goods. You can use some of your goods. If you go over here to the Builders Guild, you can then pay goods to build different buildings. And on the bottom of the board, there is piles of buildings. For example, here, if you build the chapel, which costs a white and a black cube, and is worth two points at the end of the game, but all your merchants and all your tax collectors act as each other. By the way, isn't this artwork great? Over here later on and after a certain number of rounds, these buildings will open up. Here in the armory, that gives me a special ability. I'll get extra points at the end of the game. And then these final things, like this one for example, the gardens, is just worth eight points. I might need money. You need money a lot of times in this game for various things. And you can go up here to treasury to get two coins or more if you send a merchant. Uh, 
You'll use this money over here at the Academy, spending two to get different cards, which you can see up here above it. They're, you're basically building works of art. And something very similar over here, you can spend coin in the tan cubes to get uh, scientists at the planetarium. There are also spots here in the middle of the board and in the palace, you can see each of these spots. Like for example, this gives you uh, one recruit and one tan cube. Over here, it gives you one uh, white cube and one black cube. These actually come from a deck of cards and will be rotated each round with one of them going away and a new one coming out. So there, these are basically variety of action spots that are on the board. You also have the down here where you can go and you can recruit, get recruits here at the barracks. And of course, if the merchant goes there, he'll get more recruits. You can use these recruits with black cubes to build guards. All the way down here at the bottom of the board, you can build guards to guard the city gates. And the first two people to put guards on the city gates are going to get a point. But guards are useful for the end of the round. You can also spend goods and move your pieces on these tracks, which will give you more clerics, more merchants, more scribes and tax collectors that you will be able to start using in future rounds. And there's cost and also there's victory points for being far along these tracks. There's a few other spots on the board, but that's basically the gist of it. At the end of each round, there's going to be uh, well, I'm, I'm sorry, after certain rounds, there's going to be an attack. You can see that little attack symbol there. When that happens, you will turn over the top card of this deck, and depending on how many players are in the game, shows you how strong the attack is, and hopefully you have enough guards to block the attack. If not, the people who didn't send guards will end up paying, and the people who did send guards, well, they're, they're a little bit safer. Uh, also, there will be scoring, and you'll see here that there's different scoring rounds. Also, these reset the marketplace to whatever it shows on the card. But whoever has the most scientists and whoever has the most uh, sculptures and whoever has the most guards will get points. And depending on which round it is, uh, which these cards show up depends on basically the point distribution for those. So you could get a whole lot of points, for example, here for works of art, uh, while scientists aren't worth quite as much. But maybe in a future round, scientists will be worth more and works of art not worth quite as much. This will continue on over until the score, the round marker reaches the end down here. When that happens, you will add up all the score in your buildings, scores for the tracks over here, maybe other things that you have special scores for, and your, the score that you've accumulated for doing these over the course of the game, and whoever has the most points is the winner. It is a fair assumption as we look at this game to say that that is one crazy busy board. And that's really going to throw some people off, I think. I think the board is gorgeous. You look at the city, you look at all the different things on the board, and it looks really nice. You know, I, I, I love over-the-top city pictures of the boards, but... Uh, you know, it, it is a little difficult. See, now, once you play the game, you get to know where everything is. But I hope that if they do a second reprint of this, that they fade that board out just a bit. All right. Gameplay itself. This is a worker placement game, but I love the fact that the workers have different things. And all four of the things that you can do are, are, are unique. You know, like the tax collector, that's pretty cool. You go somewhere, people have to pay you. It's, it can be really annoying to your fellows to do that. But the merchant, come on, he gives you extra stuff. That seems like a give me. Ah, oh, but the, the, the um, oh, which one is it? The cleric who can go to a spot someone else has that, you know, when they block you, that's a really good, you know, that's a good one. And then the guy who lets you put out extra ones to go first, that could be a pretty nifty deal too. So I don't know. They're all pretty neat and I like that. That's a really great attribute of this game. Everything else in this game is really just kind of cobbled from other games. From the what, what's the most important value changing from round to round to getting cubes and using those cubes to build buildings that give you special abilities or ways to convert one thing to another thing to putting guards at the gate before the people come in. But it does work well and this game is deep because of that. There's really a lot going on. I mean, when you put out your workers, you have a ton of places to 
go. Do not play this game with somebody who has a difficult time making decisions because this will be a tough one for them. This is a very impressive game. I enjoyed it. Uh, I, I think it's a, a straight up solid game. And, it, and when you go into it, they're like, wow, there's so many different options. Those cards that come out with the different action spaces ensures that each game will never be the same. And not to mention what's going to score at different times. There's a lot of interaction between the players of blocking with the workers and the tax collectors adds another element to that. So there's some neat things here in this game. So if you like worker placement games and you're looking for something a little different and fairly deep, this is definitely a game I can recommend Archon. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Boop. Boop.